Alrighty folks, what's up? You're with Budget Monk and welcome to yet another sort of highlight video here of our game. The year's 1550 and I just revoked privilege. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. We were absolutely uh, broke here, fighting way above our sort of uh, means, if you will, with 11 loans, 7,000. But as you can see, right upon the revoke here, I'm getting 113 per month. We've got corruption, making 82 ducats, even while routing out corruption. That's excellent. But I know our economy is going to improve dramatically more than that, of course. Um, if we go to Liberty Desire here, our most powerful subject, Denmark, is actually um, rebellious. But of course, that's not going to be an issue to us whatsoever as we're capped on prestige. And we're about to win many more back to back to back, of course. Um, as well as the fact that we gain prestige even when capped due to all of our modifiers, as you can uh, see. So a lot to do, of course converting on behalf of our subjects but we're going to be absolutely swimming in papal influence we're going to have every modifier under the sun absolutely jammed at all times and we're going to farm mercantilism we're also going to transfer trade power from all of our subjects so we currently collect inside of the english channel but of course the empire combined is going to have um nice influence in of course Venetia. We'll probably have 100% here in Venice, but also Genoa as well. So basically our, our merchants go here and here for now, collecting while we transfer from every nation that uh, we can afford to do it. So you can see here if we look at Liberty Desire, it's literally these three nations who were um, will contend. You can see even Milan. I'm sorting by Liberty Desire here. Milan, the fourth most upset nation with us, has no problem transferring his trade power so we will have to manage their uh, balance and stuff like that to some extent we we'll have to keep an eye on some of these um vassals as the vassal swarm will become pretty inefficient if they're all going broke but as we just subjugated them um their force limit dramatically has reduced so most of these nations are over their force limit either way guys um we unfortunately did not get the english inside of the empire the british uh, I had a lot of tactics here, guys, utilized to uh, get them inside of the Empire before revoking. And we were waiting. We were just waiting. It was getting too late here, 1550. And um, he flipped Anglican, guys. He flipped An Anglican. And it was right when I had done the first war to uh, bring London inside of the Empire. Then to add it to the Empire and return it to him. So he was unlawful. And then go in and take the new capital. And right when we're about to go in, he uh, flipped Anglican. And what that actually means is that he, he won't move his capital to a province which is not his uh, true faith religion. So we were sitting around dawdling our thumbs. Um, it got to the point we were we were setting up some more stuff for the empire, but I was winning and fighting wars against the Ottomans, winning and fighting wars um, painfully, barely, against the French who have gone quantity ideas and are absolutely insane right now. Um, and we were desperately in need of that revoked privilege here to make these wars uh, more doable, as well as uh, our economy and, and so on. And he just was refusing to really uh, convert this. I think it's because the development is 26. Usually an, a nation will prioritize their capital, but of course London is not his capital right now, and the development is so high. So it's been like decades, and he just does not convert it. So we did decide that... Um, we're going to have to just uh, deus fault him. We, we border him here. He's a different religion. And we're going to have to spend admin points cleaning this stuff up. Obviously, you just need York and London to form Rome. And there's definitely some irony there. Like, we've already owned London and caught it up once. And we're going to have to do it again. So it feels bad, man. But uh, the real big thing that, that set us back. I mean, believe it or not, guys, 1550 is really late for me. Even for such a powerful revoke was the the Danes. Um, when you get a, a nation to have one, when you view them of over 100 relations and they're inside the empire, they add their land. And this is something that's worked uh, absolutely consistently for me. But you can't see it right now because we made him an elector. So it shows as though his land is inside the empire. Like obviously that is not, you see it's isolated. 
that is not part of the Holy Roman Empire. But what you can't tell is pretty much none of this is part of the Holy Roman Empire. None of it. Basically, his capital is, and obviously the unlawful territory that he had prior to being inside the empire is inside the empire. Um, but none of this is. And this was the biggest setback. Uh, not only did it um, really throw a, a monkey wrench into the works here, as he did not add this, add this land to give us imperial authority, but it also scared the actual crap out of me because... Uh, everybody was telling me that it was trust related, but I knew for a fact that nations would add land even when they didn't have trust, um, because was, I've done it time and time and time again. Um, now, in the case of Poland, he had enough trust after we betrayed him because we didn't take his capital in the Second War. We just released Mazovia to move his capital, which he doesn't hate. The, he doesn't um, distrust you as much. We were able to ally him. And he added the land, thankfully. But everybody was saying, well, in this case, we have trust with Poland. So it's obviously trust related, even though I knew from past experience it was not trust related. So I was actually really pooping my pants. Uh, we managed to get Lithuania in as the final thing, like the final, uh, not long ago in game at all, just before we revoked privilege to actually resource some imperial authority. And he did add the land, despite not having trust. So for the last sort of two streams back to back, I've been really um, uncomfortable. I've been really disheveled. Um, I would say even embarrassed to some extent, because I'm sitting here thinking, what if nations don't add land? What if they are? What if there's been changes in these sort of mini patches and updates to, power, uh, to U4? Um, I don't know, but this was extreme setback and extremely concerning and I think more psychological than anything else because he, he wouldn't add the land and I, I was feeling awfully uncomfortable. But however, with that being said, um, it did prevent me from getting Novgorod inside the empire because I couldn't spread the empire. You can see, look at Denmark's land. He was boxing out the Baltic regions and therefore Novgorod and uh, we were keeping an elector slot open and free to give to Novgorod because you cannot pass, uh, you cannot make somebody an elector when you pass this reform here, which is essentially the same nation always inherits the HRE. Um, electors become irrelevant. So we were postponing the empire reforms for a long time, trying to get Novgorod inside the Holy Roman Empire. We ended up coming all the way through Lithuania, one war through Mimel. I've sold some of these provinces getting cheesing Lithuania in and then the second war taking all of this land which I've since released Polsk coming up here and coring this so spreading the empire this way to release Novgorod and of course now that he is my subject the plan is to um use Deus Vault from here because we're behind schedule Russia has formed so now I'm becoming insecure about all of this land being annexed and we'll, we'll struggle with CB and things because we don't have imperialism. So what I'm hoping to do is in our first war, we're going to Deus Vault Russia and basically snake all the way out here and return the land to Novgorod, whether it is his core or not, as he is my subject, um, which will actually box Russia in. And then, of course, we'll rinse and repeat, um, gobbling Russia up. And when Russia doesn't exist, then we will have a Catholic Russia here by releasing Novgorod, making him independent, an independent nation as opposed to, so basically cancelling our subject status when our truce is up. We can do that in five years time. And then of course he will form Russia because he's independent and he will colonize everything and so on as a Catholic. Um, and coincidentally, he actually took a religious ideas third, which is, that's huge. That's a pog, I would say. That is a pog in chat. Uh, he's going to help convert his land because um, AI converting land is, is huge and relevant in this game, and we do intend to feed our ally Russia, um, Asia, in the late game. But of course, it's crucially important that you make him an elector, because if I cancel my subject status, he will form Russia, which makes him leave the empire, unless he is an elector. So we finally got this on lock, and although we are behind... There's one really interesting thing here to uh, keep note of, and it's that there is a Habsburg on the Spanish throne right now. So, although it is a, a late revoke here, 1550, I remember originally when I set out to do this run, 
I wanted to, or normal difficulty I'm talking about, in the beginning of this year, I wanted to form the Roman Empire by 1600, and we found, boy, is that hard to say the least, not even close. We always ended up forming the Roman Empire, which is the next, next objective, in about the 20s, the 1620s. Um, so, if we PU him, it, there's 50 years it required to actually integrate him into our country. And um, with that in mind, you can see it's already 1600 if we PU'd him right now. So, what we're essentially looking at is this heir coming of age, because this queen is 63 years old. So, we would suspect in the next 13 years or so that this heir comes of age and... Uh, maybe he doesn't have an heir at that point. If you see what I'm saying, this dies, he's in regency, this comes of age, and it's about a 50-50, I would say. So we've broken our alliance here, and uh, I haven't, I've literally paused the game since we revoked privilege, we haven't played it out, but we don't appear to have any valid rivals, meaning he won't rival us, he likes us, we got the royal marriage. So, the idea is, you can see we've fed him, we fed him into some of the Portuguese land, into France, uh, and we waited uh, until we formed Spain, as opposed to freaking out and PUing him early, so that we didn't get the bug with Aragon, where you don't um, PU Aragon in this patch. So, I would say this is a huge variable, whether we can PU him in about 12 years, and then let's say it takes, um, if we jam this modifier with 15% annexation cost reduction, obviously we're Austria, so we have 40% with, with influence ideas. So it would be 55% reduced annexation cost reduction that would be jamming there. And of course, it would probably be simultaneously integrating some of the Italians or something um, to help form the Roman Empire. Uh, so very diplo point efficient. Uh, that would be just so relevant. But as it gets later, I'm going to have to start thinking about annexing Spain, guys, which is very upsetting. But I do have a plan. I do have a plan, and that plan would be to essentially release Aragon, okay? So we would release Aragon somewhere, anywhere, where, so it would be one of these islands, they're perfect, because you don't need a fort to take them or anything, they're low war score. So we would release Aragon, okay? Except the way we would do it is we would annex a province, we would core it up, and thanks to this, we can add it to the empire. Then we would reconquest Aragon, but make sure in our first war that we conquer as deep into the heartland of Spain as we can, or Iberia, as we can. And then we would release Aragon, as long as they have Liberty Desire, you can cheese Liberty Desire by spamming this, enable Scottage, because when you cancel the Scottage, it puts their Liberty Desire up. And then you enable again and then cancel again. And as long as a subject has Liberty Desire with you, then when you cancel them uh, as, a, as a subject they appreciate it instead of hate it. Like, Overlord abandoned us, negative 200 relations modifier. Instead, they appreciate it. Like, hey, you made us independent. So then Aragon would like us. He would become an independent, he would be an independent member of the Holy Roman Empire. So then he would add his land self-autonomously to the empire, spreading the empire into Iberia. And then from there, we would be looking at cheesing Spain into the empire, just like we did Poland. So, obviously we can core next to the holy roman empire um so the way that we would do it is basically we'd want to annex probably this for coring range and both of these uh i'm not 100 percent sure i think toledo is the quote unquote capital of the spanish tag but we'd probably want to do both just to make sure on madrid because he might get the event to move his capital and so we'd annex both of these, call them up, add them to the empire, give them back to Spain, and in the next war, we'd just have to annex his new capital city, wherever it is, and he would move his capital most likely to Toledo, then he's a member of the Holy Roman Empire. And then, of course, we would look at re-revoking. So passing revoke privilege again to vassalize both Spain and Aragon. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? So that would be the approach. And although it would take quite some time to set up, once they are your vassal, you've got only a 10-year requirement to be able to integrate them. So either way, we're looking as though we should be able to, um, whether it's one big war or, or quite a lot of wars, which shouldn't be too difficult now that we have the Empire on our side, we should be looking at Diplo vassalizing this area or this portion of the world. Uh, just to clarify, the way that you re-revoke is you simply fight a war. So let's say we attack France. 
then we separate piece Portugal, quickly get him out of the war by offering him, you concede, revoke a reform. Now, if you revoke a reform, all of these nations are still your subjects. It's too late, essentially. But, so you're not going to lose these subjects. Now, you have to be very careful. You're playing with fire. If you do it again, this reform allows you to have, it's hidden. It doesn't tell you, but it allows you to have subjects inside of the Holy Roman Empire without costing subject slots, relation slots. So if you cancel another reform in order to try to exploit, like earlier I was saying, you can't make an elector if you have this reform passed. If you try to go back more, you will die, essentially. You'll never gain Diplo points ever again because you'll have like 80 relations or something like that. So you have to be very careful. Um, and the other issue, of course, is that you need to make sure you have the imperial authority to re-revoke privilege, and you also need to be able to get the votes. Now, Spain will be Catholic. It will be Catholic. And I'm convinced, considering Denmark was passing the vote, that I will be able to get Spain's vote despite his size so that he will actually vote to become a subject. Uh, we did use the one reputation here from influential diplomats here, which we will not be able to gain against Spain. However, so you can see my, even though we're subjugating the papacy after revoking privilege, our reputation is extremely high. So that's interesting. Now that I think about it, I might also have to cancel the Pope to gain the reputation back to then obviously subjugate the Pope, Aragon, and Spain again. Uh, however, what I was going to say is down here, this one. We'll simply pass this really quickly. And this mission requires us to subjugate this area of the world. So, done. We will just simply, at any moment, feed Poland into Mazovia. And then we will use this reputation instead of that reputation Looks like we'll cancel the Papal State and, uh, yeah, be able to re-vassalize anything that we cancel by re-revoking privilege. Um, otherwise, yeah, religiously, we've set up Novgorod, we're behind. Um, I feel like we're slightly behind in England. And I'm um, concerned about him spreading the Anglican faith all over the world as uh, a one faith is a precursor to run Roman culture. But the reason I'm making this video, guys, is because I would say officially... This is the run. This is the run. We're going to be trying here to um, expand to the best of our ability. We're very far ahead in admin right now, which is, it's a good thing, obviously. Look at the Ottomans. He was allied to Milan and Denmark, and now he's just absolutely free food. This is our first war. We're going to fight a day's vault, cross the strait, and annex um, as much land as we can from the Ottomans as possible, and core it up. Um, I remember, like, the first video that I posted, guys, things fell apart pretty quickly. <laughs> And I was being optimistic to post those videos at all. But this is the same second video that I posted, a continuation here. And things are looking good due to what I just said about the Spain, that, that mechanic. And meditating upon this situation, I think this is the run, of course. We are per perhaps a little bit behind my normal difficulty run in a multitude of ways. Um, however, I just keep fixating on the fact that... We overkilled that. We overkilled that run when we completed the one Roman culture. We still had time remaining in the game. So, obviously, some challenges to overcome here on very hard difficulty. Um, everybody's more powerful, but the future is looking really prosperous here as we're going to be able to absolutely smash the Ottomans. And I would suggest France as well when our truce comes up this year. Um, yep, we should no problem PUing Spain either in terms of the actual war. Uh, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm ready for the continuation, and I hope you guys are too. So I will be live right after I posted this video, but this is a bit of an update, which a lot of people requested, and we're continuing on, boys, for the, the undoable non-existent achievement, because it's too hard. The one Roman culture on very hard difficulty. I hope you guys are hyped. I uh, hope to see you guys live. I've been having an insane week over on uh, Twitch last week, and I hope that continues this week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time in another video.